Why do I read? Well, that's simple. Reading is so much fun. Reading is one of the only things that you can do that will legitimately take you on a journey outside of your own life and make you forget about who you are for a while. Yes, there are movies, and movies are great, but books are so much better. In books, you get a more personal connection to the characters, mostly the narrators of the story, because you are looking inside of their mind rather than just seeing the outside. And also, there is so much more information in books than there are in movies because of the fact that the authors don't have to worry about a time limit. Authors aren't expecting you to read a 400, 500, 600, however many page book in one day, so they don't have to worry about making it a certain length. They will add as much information as they, as they think they need in their story to make it the best story possible. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. While your eyes are closed, picture yourself walking into a library, whichever library you would like. I want you to go to the center of that library and spin around slowly in a circle so you can see all of the books. How many books are there? Hundreds? Thousands? Hundreds of thousands? Millions? Okay, open your eyes. The best part about reading and what makes reading so much fun is that every single one of the books that you pictured has a different story. Some that are happy, some that are sad, some that you would hate, some that you'll love, and some that are just what you need to read at that moment. The best part about reading are the stories. That's the most fun part about reading too, is you can decide what you want to read. If you hate a book, never read it again. Throw it down and pick up another one that's going to interest you. Reading is fun because you don't have to read the same story ever again because of how many books there are out in the world. Still don't believe me? <laughs> that's okay. Go ahead and keep on watching, and I think that you'll soon, soon come to realize that I'm correct. Do you believe in magical lands? No. Well, you should. They're real. I have been to one. <laughs> and it is the most beautiful and the funnest place that I have ever been. In fact, I am considered to be a queen of this magical land with my sister Susan and my two brothers Peter and Edmund. We are the kings and the queens of Narnia. We helped defeat the White Witch who called herself the Queen of Narnia, though she really wasn't. Whenever the White Witch was ruling, she always made it winter, but never Christmas. It was not Christmas for 100 years. Can you imagine no presents for 100 years? Her goal was to make sure that the prophecy about my brothers, my sister, and I would never come true. The prophecy was that two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve would come to overrule her, rule her as queen. So she made this rule that if anyone ever found a daughter of Eve or a son of Adam, that they were supposed to turn it over to her. Well, we met some wonderful people in Narnia that helped us defeat the White Witch, with that rule still in place. We met the Beavers and Aslan and Mr. Tumnus, who is my closest friend. They all helped us defeat the White Witch so that we could overrule that prophecy. One day, after a long time of my sister, my brothers and I being the kings and the queens of Narnia, we ended up accidentally returning to our land. And since then, we haven't been back. We're very hopeful that we will go back one day because as Aslan says, once a king and queen of Narnia, always a king and queen of Narnia. So we're very hopeful that one day we will get to return to Narnia so we can refulfill our duties as kings and queens. My name is Melinda Sordino. I'm about to be a freshman at Meriwether High School in Syracuse, New York. And I'm scared. No, I'm more than scared. I'm terrified. You see, people don't really like me anymore. I used to have friends. People used to enjoy being around me like Rachel, but not after what happened this summer. I can't even talk to my parents about it because they wouldn't even care if I did. And if I did tell them about it, they would tell me that I'm just being ridiculous, that I'm acting ridiculous. But I'm not. I'm not being ridiculous. 
people just don't understand. They, they don't realize that. I didn't call the cops at that party to get anyone in trouble. I just needed help and no one at that party was helping me. And now this phone call has just blown up in my face. My friends have deserted me. and People I don't even know hate me. You know, I used to be invisible and all I wanted was to be noticed, to have some attention. But now that I have all of the attention on me, I hate it. And I just want to go back to being invisible. But people don't even know what happened to me at that party. They don't know why I called the cops. You know, maybe if they did, they wouldn't hate me. I, I just feel like if I told anyone, they wouldn't believe me because of the other person involved. But I have to say it. It's just going to kill me if I don't. So here it is. I called the cops at the party over the summer because Andy Evans raped me. I was raped. And no one knows. And I don't know how to tell anyone. My name is Stargirl. No, that's not my actual name. My actual name is Susan. But that just wasn't fitting in my life anymore. The way that I look at it, names are supposed to describe something about you. I mean, that's the first impression that everyone gets of you. Hello, my name is blank. And Susan just wasn't cutting it for, for me anymore. I mean, names are supposed to describe something about who you are, and Susan didn't do that for me. So that's why I named myself Stargirl. That's exactly how I would describe myself to people. Stargirl. Stargirl is actually my fifth name. My first name was Susan, and then I was Pocket Mouse, then I was Mud Pie, then Holly Gully, and now I'm Stargirl. <laughs> I mean, who knows what my name is going to be next. I am all about being true about who you truly are. I mean, why would you want to be something that you aren't? If you're being someone that you aren't, then you're just uh, ignoring all the unique qualities that you were born with. I mean, that's why I'm so confident about who I am as a person and what I do, because I don't want to be anyone different. I don't want to be what other people would consider to be normal. I want to be Stargirl, because Stargirl is me, and no one is better at being me than me. I just started my sophomore year of high school at MICA High School, and as of right now, I love it. It's so much fun. There are just so many different people in one spot. I mean, who knew that that many people existed? It's so different from being homeschooled, but as of right now, it is just so much fun. I can't wait to really just get going in high school. I want to make friends. I want to join clubs. I just can't wait for it all to start. My name is Charlie Bucket, and I love chocolate. <laughs> I live by this chocolate factory, which is actually the biggest chocolate factory in the entire world. So I smell chocolate all the time. So that makes me crave it all the time. But the thing is, my family is very poor. We eat cabbage uh, most days for uh, three, four meals a day. So we don't afford chocolate. So we can't get chocolate very often at all. But I always get one chocolate bar on my birthday every year. No matter what, I always get that chocolate bar. Sometimes there are good things about not getting what you want all the time. Because I don't get chocolate all the time, I never get tired of it, and I'm always so excited for my birthday when I know that I will get this chocolate bar. Though now, I never have to worry about wanting or craving chocolate ever again, because actually, I have a lifetime supply of it now, and I also live and own the chocolate factory. I live in it with my family and Mr. Willy Wonka. And it's because of Mr. Willy Wonka those golden tickets, and the tour of the incredible factory that this happened to me. So, four other children apart from me got these golden tickets. Mr. Wonka put them in these chocolate bars and sent them all over the world. So we had five children from all over the world come to this chocolate factory. Every one of them got to leave with a lifetime supply of chocolate, which is incredible because Willy Wonka's chocolate is marvelous. But the thing is, the other four children were very naughty and very mean, and they always got what they want. So because of that, they would do something that Mr. Willy Wonka told them exactly not to do. They would get themselves into a mess, and then they would have to leave the factory. 
pretty soon after the tour started, I was the only child left. And that was when Mr. Willy Wonka gave me the news. So it was because of Mr. Willy Wonka, the golden tickets, and the tour of the Incredible Factory that saved my family from starvation and that gave my family more money. Mr. Willy Wonka saved my family, whether or not he knows it, and I will never be able to thank him fully for all that he did for me. Dear friend, my name is Charlie and I'm writing to you because I know that you'll listen to me. I know that you will truly listen and you won't judge me off of anything that I say. I have a pretty good life. I mean that, but I have had some crappy things happen to me, like my friend Michael's death. You know, Michael and I weren't best friends. We weren't close friends really either, but I always thought he was a really cool kid. So why does a suicide bother me so much? I don't know. I think about it, but I think it's because I don't understand why he did it. I, I don't get why someone would want to kill themselves. And I guess that's what bothers me, that I can't answer that why question. But the biggest thing that has really affected me since I was seven is my Aunt Helen's death. My Aunt Helen had a lot of problems, and they were really serious problems, but I don't know, her and I just always got along. But I'm the reason that she died. It's my fault. And I think that's the hardest part. I mean, on my birthday, my aunt would buy me two presents every year, no matter what. And <clears throat> the year that I was turning seven, she, she was out on her way to go buy me my birthday presents when she got in a car accident and she died. And I just can't stop blaming myself. I, I just can't help this feeling. And I just wish that she was still here, that she was still alive and still breathing. And the more that I think about it, I just wish that she never bought me birthday presents. Because if she never bought me a present, then she wouldn't have died. And you know, I would rather never get one single present for the rest of my life if it meant that my Aunt Helen was still here. Thanks for listening. This will be one of many letters. But I don't know, I guess off of this letter I just really wanted to say that I just wish this guilty feeling would go away. From Charlie. Dear friend, I've learned a whole lot about myself, about who I am, and why I feel the way that I do ever since I've been writing you these letters. And you know, I just can't get past one thing. Why did I have to remember something so serious in a moment that could have been so beautiful? And you know, I just can't believe that I didn't remember what happened at all. But I don't know, everything happens for a reason, right? Sam, <laughs> the love of my life, as you know. Well, we were fooling around one night, and all of a sudden I just remembered that that was the way that my Aunt Helen had touched me. And I freaked out. I mean, and Sam didn't care. She wasn't mad. She didn't even judge me, but that freaked out feeling just wouldn't go away. My parents found me in what they call a catatonic state. I mean, basically, I was unconscious. And so they... They admitted me into a mental hospital, and while I was in that mental hospital, the truth came out about why I've been feeling the way that I do, and the truth about what happened with my Aunt Helen. Things kind of started to make sense why Aunt Helen and I were always attached at the hip. I just didn't realize when I was so young that what she did wasn't acceptable to do, I guess. But I, I mean, you know the problems that I told you about my first letter that my Aunt Helen had? and how there were serious problems? Well, my parents told me the truth about what those were. When my Aunt Helen was young, she was molested by some man, but her parents didn't believe her and they even kept inviting the man that she said molested her over to her house. Traumatizing, I mean, I, 
I can't even under I can't even begin to understand how she would be feeling. I mean, eventually she got out of there, which is great. But those feelings stayed with her. And she obviously needed more help because if she didn't need more help, she wouldn't have touched me the way that she did. I left the mental hospital after about two months. <clears throat> I'm not perfect yet, but I'm getting there. I can feel it. I still stand by what I said in my first letter about how I have a good life. And you know what I realized? I realized that even if we don't have the power to choose where we come from, we do have the power to choose where we're going. And that's exactly what I plan to do. I plan to choose how I live the rest of my life. I really just wanted to thank you for listening to me and also for the judgment that I didn't get. That's why I wrote to you in the first place, right? And you know, even though I don't want to stop talking to you. I feel like it's time that I should. But I always know that if I need your help in the future, all I have to do is write you a letter. Thank you for all of your help. Your friend. My name is Katniss Everdeen. I'm from District 12 and I'm the female tribute that will be competing in the 74th Annual Hunger Games. Originally, my little sister Prim's name was drawn. She's 12 and I just knew that if she went to the Hunger Games, she would not survive. And I knew that I would not be able to watch her die on some television screen. So I volunteered in her place. <laughs> District 12's very first volunteer you know, I don't have any chance of survival either. We don't learn in District 12, the poorest district there is, how to survive in the Hunger Games. Because we don't know how. If anyone from District 12 goes to the Hunger Game every year, you better just say goodbye to them because they're going to die. That's just how it is. Before this year, we've had one winner. His name is Haymitch, and right now he's supposed to be my mentor, but he spends more time drunk than he does sober, so he's not really going to help me out in the arena. <sighs> the only thing that might help me out is the fact that I can hunt. My best friend Gail says that hunting people is no different from hunting animals, and you know, I guess he's right, but who knows if that's going to help me. Every single year, the tributes are different. They have different skill sets, sk skills that I don't have, and every single year, the arena is different. Who knows if I'm going to be able to hunt in this brand new arena that I'm going to die in. If there was a better chance of my survival, I might have more confidence in myself. And no matter how much I think that I'm not going to win the Hunger Games, I know that I have to try. Because when Prim came to say goodbye to me, I promised her that I would. And I have to. I can't give up. Because if I give up, and my sister and mom survive, they're going to starve. I mean, yeah, Gail will help them. I know he will. But it won't be a family anymore. They won't live a happy life. Not that what we live right now is happy, but... I just wish that I had a better chance of survival. Because there are 24 tributes, and only one of them comes out. So I guess that you could say the odds aren't exactly in my favor. Do you see what I'm saying now? All of the characters that you just saw being portrayed are drastically different. They live different lives. They have different stories. But every single one of those books was so much fun for me to read, no matter how different they were. And like I said before, not every single book that you're going to read is going to interest you. If you pick up a book and hate it, just put it down and pick up another and give that one a chance. Because reading is incredible, and reading is so much fun, and all it takes is one book, one book, to spark your love for reading. All it takes is one book to have fun reading. All it takes is one book to see how much reading can change your life. One book is all it takes. So my point is to give books a chance. If you hate a book, just pick up another one. Never give up on reading, because reading is so much fun.